Okay, so what I did was, is I went into one of these, I think it was this one, and I grabbed sort of this dark value back here, went my selection tool here, eyedropper tool, and I went over here and I filled it. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna keep all this layered because I, I, I'm gonna probably tweak everything quite a bit. I don't usually know what I'm gonna do here. I mean, I know generally what I'm gonna do. But... And I'm gonna go just for the hell of it, I'm gonna grab this color. And again, I never, I don't really usually know what I'm going to end up liking. And I'm going to go, let's see if I can do it with this. I'm going to, use, I'm going to select that and make another layer. That's not too bad. Now, I think I'm going to take another. I want to kind of imply a core here, maybe. So let's see if we can do that. And then I'm just going to soften this up. I don't like that. Let's go. I want a real soft smudge. Let me get my pen tool. Move over here a little bit, you guys. All right, so I'm going to select this again. I'm going to select my little thumbnail. That's not too bad. And this is all going to get buried, so I don't. I'm not really that worried about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. And if I need to reinforce it later, I will. And then I'm going to make another layer. And let's just try, and I'm just using this stuff for color reference. And I'm gonna go up to here and see what I can find here. Let's try this one. I don't know why it's giving me that weird color. Hang on. Something is weird here. It's weird. Normally, I look right here at my overlay, and usually that's off. Okay, or usually it's right here, it's off. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this brush. Let's try this one, see what happens. Yeah, I don't know why that other one's doing that. This will probably work. What I'm looking for here is sort of nice random textures. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. And then let's go back here again one more time because that's bugging me now. And why is that not working? Yeah. And I'm going to come in here and see what works. That's too big. By the way, what I forgot to put in yesterday in that when we were talking about that little scene, I should have put some uh, clouds in it, but I'll show you guys that later. So this technique, you know, when you're, we're using now these kind of painterly kind of things, um, we can do a, a million things with it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. So what we're really doing here is creating big ideas again and then working into our small ideas yeah that's it that's basically all we're doing okay now so we're starting already to get a little bit of a planet idea yeah now but now i'm going i don't know if i want to do let's do this so i'm going to make another layer here and i'm going to go Let's go back over to one of these. I'm gonna go into this pretty nice, and I'm gonna fill that. So you can see it back there, it's filled. It's just behind my layer. Do you guys see that? Yeah. And then I'm gonna go back here, and then I'm gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 
And I'm going to give it a little atmosphere. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now that atmosphere, I could go, well, it's a warm planet, you know, it could be, you know, it could be whatever color I want it to be, but I could go through the color spectrum and go, what works? I still like the blue. So I'm just going to leave it there. And then I'm kind of going that now let's go, let's do this. I kind of just think now I want to make it a volcanic planet. Okay. So it's probably not going to work with this color scheme. So I'm going to go to, let's take this one and go, let's pick a blue that's in this. Now, another thing, I'm pulling this out of here. So I sort of have a palette here. Okay. So it'll probably harmonize pretty good. Let's see. Let's see if that works. And I'm going to go to my command U, click my little colorize button. That's not too bad. And then I'm going to go saturate a little bit, but I'm going to darken it. Desaturate a little bit. I'm going to darken it. Okay. And then I'm going to go now here on this texture. I could, you know, play around with it and go where, what looks cool. I mean, if I started going earth, like I might go there. Okay. But I'm not really that worried about that. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to harmonize this whole thing. And there's a reason for that. So I'm going to go command U and just go to the same blue colorize. And start to get a little bit of a, and I'm doing this deliberately because I want to get a specific kind of thing here going. So let's go there. That's not too bad. And I'm going to see what happens if I do this. And then I'm going to see if I can go. So this now requires me screwing around, okay? Because I have to figure it out. And I'm doing everything every time on a different layer because I want to shift some of these colors in here. Now, when I throw this down again, I can always change it. So that's the beauty of it. Now, another thing I want to do here is Maybe these are, you know, raised. So if I sort of blend them out a little, it'll sort of give that idea of sort of topography. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't want to overdo it. I'm very, and I'm not just going through, it's not random. I'm kind of letting it sort of suggest things. And then again, I always do this. Now I'm looking at going, it needs a, just too many small shapes. You see that? Yeah. So maybe I need something up here. I kind of like that. I'm gonna leave some of these little round things because that image I was just looking at, see these little stainy looking round things are craters probably, right? So this is starting to imply that a little bit. So now I'm gonna go in there and pull away from those. Now I'm getting some nice random. Does that make sense you guys? How, yeah. that's, how that's implying that. And again, I don't want all my edges to be the same. I got to be really careful with it. And then if you look at this, <clears throat> and not, by the way, we're not making a documentary here. You know, you have a lot of leeway here. Okay. Um, I'm just using this reference as basic reference. Does that make sense? And it gives me some nice color. But what I like about this, this environment or this, it's so lit, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna come in here and I want some sort of probably bounced light in here. Let's go in here. I think I like this better. So let's see how that looks. We can always adjust it. And I'm gonna make another layer and then maybe get a regular brush I'm, I'm going to either do this two, one of two ways. So that's old stump. I'm going to remember that Groot old stump. You could rename these if you want, by the way. And again, I'm on a new layer because I might, let's try it this way. And I can, I can soften that up, but I'm going to try it a different way. And 
And then I'm going to do our usual trick here. See if I can find something in that's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. You know, in some of these, if I go, well, it's a little much, again, I can adjust it. So I'm gonna go back through here. That's even kind of interesting right there. I kind of like that, but I'm gonna go again. There we go. I'm gonna go again here with this and see if I can make this work. I think I'm gonna go bigger. What I want to do is get a little edge light here, if that makes sense. And I'm going to soften up this edge. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. And then again, back to see if I can find. And a lot of times I'm not really looking for an overlay, I just go. Maybe it'll give me something really cool, like maybe there or even there. But I want a little warmth in it, and it'll make more sense later. This right here needs to get adjusted right here. Wait, where is it? So I'm going back to my original layer all the time and using that. See, that was bugging me. I'm just going to get a little bit of bounce light on here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're using the original layer to like make a selection, a quick yeah. selection. OK. Yeah. So that's why I don't need to do like lock transparent pixels or any of that kind of stuff because it's just gonna um, it's gonna uh, do it for me, you know. Now I'm gonna come back here <coughs> and see if it, this needs to get a little bigger, maybe. Yeah. Now later on, I'll probably soften the edge of the planet itself as it as it shifts into the atmosphere. The reason I don't want to do that now is I'm using that for a selection. Now I could go. Select, select, save selection, planet. You know, and I could save it like that. But the problem is, is that's going to save the hard outline selection. And if I soften it now, it's going to keep going out a little bit. So it's actually not going to be a perfectly accurate selection. Okay. And if I select it on the, on the layer, it's a soft edge and it just starts to do weird things. So I save that till later, okay? And I wanna save it till later anyway, cause I don't really know what I'm doing yet, you know? So then like this new texture that I put on here, or not there, don't know, where is it? Okay, this is why you name your layers, by the way. So whenever you're working, gosh darn it, make sure you, um, you're naming them. And then I usually go here and go, again, is there a better color choice? And I think actually warming it up is kind of nice. And it's going to make more sense in a minute. So what do you think, warmer? I kind of liked how it was before. And I liked when you started adding the rim of orange light on the side. Yeah. Uh, but then you blended all the orange out. <laughs> this here? Yeah. Yeah, because that's my start. Okay, okay. So you know, are you talking about having a harder lit edge? I, I like the hard edge. I thought it looked No, nice. there's nothing wrong with that. But I might come back to that later. Okay, so so let's go back. If you like this cool, I'll leave it cool. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Here's this is important. I'm glad you brought that up. When I'm doing this, I'm always setting up the bigger idea and working to the smaller idea. So the edge light thing probably will come back, or at least I'm going to revisit it. Um, but I want to dance some of that light around and then go into the edge light. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I might even come in here at some point and go, well, if that's getting lit, then maybe. It's also getting highlighting some of the texture out here. So I can get some of this starting to catch a little texture. Does that make sense? Right. So you just want like for this first pass to kind of like read the form, right? Yeah. It, it looks 
interesting planet? Do we yeah. feel cool or warm to it? And then you're going to harden everything to give it more detail. Yeah. Where the light source is. Keep it, I'm going to keep it very painterly and loose, right? I mean, it's not going to get like drastically. Um, yeah, hard, hard. Different or whatever. But, um, but see how now that's starting to light up some of that texture on there? Mm -hmm. You know, and then I go, <clears throat> well, maybe this is... And again, make a new layer. Let's save this before we lose everything. Maybe there's like a pole. Get a little ice or something. Yeah, down at the bottom or the top and the bottom. Hang on. Yeah, I lost too much of it. And it probably would have to go to a brighter value is my guess. And then up here, maybe I'll go. And again, I have this on a separate layer in case I don't like it. Come on. And I can also pull this down a little bit if I need to. Now, the reason I'm talking about sort of building up the idea This has to get more subtle. It's just sticking out too much. Um, is because a lot of times what you see when you're not thinking in that sort of big picture kind of way is uh, I'm also going to pull some of these strokes around the form. Does that make sense? So they're pulling up around that form because I always want to make sure that I'm um, uh, cr uh, creating, creating form. Volume. Yeah. So then would the next step be putting an atmosphere or let's say like a moon or a satellite or a, a ring of um, like a Saturn ring that would give depth you to could. it? I'm just, uh, what the next thing will be once I get this somewhere is I will probably create the background. Oh, the background, okay. Because right? it's going to need context. So we're here, and I forgot what I was going to do. Oh yeah, um, let's go up here now. Because sometimes... And I'm going to grab this darker value. And I'm going to go back. Let me see if I can make this work. Let's just do it like this. I want to change the... No, I won't. And then I'm going to take... I'm just going to make a copy of this. Drag it. i got to change the color so I can see it. That's good. I'll just put it, come on. I'll put it there, select it, go back here, cut it out, turn that off. Okay. Then I think I'll go, maybe take this. Oops. I'm going to do the same thing. Make a copy. This doesn't have to be perfect. And then here, no. Which one do I want? That one. Or I want, I want this one. So I'm gonna go, no, that's okay. Probably needs to be a little smaller. No, no, let's check it. So I'll probably have to adjust this. I want to get a little bit of a core in there. I've seen these pictures of Earth from space. Sometimes it has this crazy kind of core in it. It's a little bit, and it's gonna disappear a little bit also as I work into this. I 
then I think I'm going to go, I'm just going to try this. I don't know if it'll work. No, nope. try this one. Why is it not working? I want to blend it out here a little bit. That's weird. Let's try that again. Okay, so we have our thing here. Let's get rid of these two. So confusing. Get rid of them. I'm also going to see if I can desaturate this a little bit. A little more of a shadowy kind of idea. Oops. I still was on my uh, gradient tool. There we go. You guys understand what I'm doing, yeah? Yeah. I see the core shadow. I'm just a little lost on where the light now. Are you still keeping it lit from the bottom? It's getting oh. an edge light here. Look, this is space. So light could be coming from different directions. So what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is take advantage of this kind of idea mm -hmm. where it's sort of light that I can go, I can pull light from wherever I want. Okay. Okay. As I build the background, I'll start using that to make sense of it. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh -huh. Make sense, Casey? Yes. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to have to, I kind of like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that. This has to get a little, I don't want that to stick out so much. Oops. That's a little better. That's a little better. It's not so prominent. Okay, so let's go back here. And what you get here is a lot of, so now we're going to go in and grab some of this idea and let's see what we can do with it. <laughs> I'm going to grab a big, this is to me what's fun is I can grab all sorts of different brushes here for this kind of thing. And I also like doing this because it's just freedom. So let's go. I want to see how hard dapple looks here. Yeah, that's not bad. Because I just want to get some of this smoky nebula stuff. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's another thing that I do like about <clears throat> digital. I do a lot of mixed media techniques. I have to go through a lot of stuff to do that. And here I can paint oil or watercolor, you know, gouache, whatever I want over whatever I want, which is, I think is really cool. Let's see if this subtle blue, if I can pick that up. Now, by the way, you guys, if I go over here, there's a little color in that dark right there. Do you see that? Yeah? The reddish? Just in here, that dark. But if I select, oh, it is picking it up. It, it did pick it up. Usually, a lot of times, it'll just go to black. <clears throat> so you got to be careful with that. Not sure if I like this yet. I want this on another layer again, because I want to really be able to control all these layers. I don't really like that color. So I'm gonna to go to here maybe. I like that a lot. So I'm gonna shrink this brush down because if I just touch some of these, it actually starts to get some really nice texture going. So I'm really, so now we're getting a little bit of sort of a gassy cloud thing going on. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. yes, absolutely. And I like that little trail it's making. So I could also go, let's do this. Let's take a brighter. I think this is a brighter value. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm just going to take this color and make it a little brighter. Maybe. Maybe shift it slightly. Let's see what this looks like. See what happens. Let's just try that. Come on. It's 
thinking again. Hang on. There. Okay, so I'm going to go. I have this on a separate layer, this little nebula gas cloud. Oh, shit. I put them on the same layer. See, that's why you don't do that. Let's try this, though. Let's go lock transparent pixels. And then... So now I can just hit some of those cloudy edges and light them up a little. Does that make sense? Yes. Because I'm not getting everything around it. So I can vary that color within that little nebula a little bit, which is nice. I'm gonna unlock it. And then let's find another color in here. Let's go to this one, see if there's anything. These are kind of nice. Yeah, let's get a little of that. Or actually maybe down here, because that'll start to explain all this warmth. So maybe I need something down there a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of it up there. And I'm going to focus this warm nebula stuff down lower. Actually, I'm going to put this on another layer. Because I like the idea of manipulating them after I put it down. Let's go to brush. And I'm going to go really big. Let's see what that does. That's kind of nice. It's a little too framey. There, that's a little better. There. And then I'm going to go, let's try the lock transparent pixels thing again. Let's get a little bit of. I'm going to get a different texture in here. And it's only going to hit my cloud. It's not going to go out like that, which I like. So I just want to kind of highlight that little, this warmth down here maybe is affecting the planet. Maybe some of the cool in the planet's affecting the bouncing into the warm cloudy thing, right? So I'm just trying to keep dicking around with the um, um, color and stuff like that. Dicking around is the technical term, by the way. So let's grab something else here. <clears throat> let's go here. And having this reference obviously just gives me an instant palette. Okay. And I'm emulating this, so why why wouldn't I use it? <clears throat> and let's go maybe. Let's just I want to get a secondary sort of a color that's back there somewhere. Like Maybe, I don't know if it's bright enough, let's see. Maybe that one, that little pixel I just picked. And now I'm gonna come up here, go back to my brushes and go. These are, this is a um, Photoshop brush, I think. So let's go to this, it's a spatter brush. Now, if I go like that, wait. I need to unlock that and I need to go back to the background. So I'll make a new layer and I'm going to go, is that good? I think actually it would work better if I went a little smaller, but then it's going to be clustered. So that's okay. And again, I'm going to come back in here because I don't like things looking uniform. I'm going to knock some of this stuff out a little bit and reshape it. And some of it will just get obliterated by the smudge brush. I could also do it with a um, uh, whatever you call it, eraser here and there. But this is working okay. It gives me a little more cloudiness, dustiness in there. Also, I could come in here and go, well, maybe I want it more scattered. So I'm going to come up here to my, um, here's the brush. I'm going to go to scattering. I think I can do it here even. Let's see. Let's go to scattering. Let's scatter it out more. 
Yeah, see, that's nice. See that? You guys with me here? Yeah. yeah. So let's grab another. Now I want to put a layer of tighter or of a more of closer, whatever you call them, stars. These are going to get a little brighter. Come on. There we go. Oh, that's not too bad. Again, I'm going to come in here, knock some of these out. Some of them can become gas. Like when you're when they're talking about these kind of nebulous forms, they're star nurseries, right? So you have all this gassy stuff that gets pulled in and it creates stars. So there's kind of nurseries, right? And by the way, if you go in and you look at this imagery, the best stuff to look or some of the coolest stuff to look at is, um, hang on. I don't like that. Is, because it's just mind blowing stuff. Like this stuff from the Hubble Space Telescope. Whoa. Isn't that nuts? Wow. And you go, look. I mean, if this doesn't give you conceptual ideas, I don't know what will. I mean, I could pull characters out of this, all kinds of stuff. And here you got that cloudy stuff, some of the stars dancing around. You know, there's just a bunch of mind blowing stuff from this. And these kind of shapes are actually with the technique we're doing right now. You can create these all day long. Does that make sense? Okay. The reason I like doing it with the planets is it's such an abstract. Uh, it's so abstract, right? And then you're just using that abstraction and creating, you know, obviously a recognizable image. Um, okay, so we got that. I'm going to do one more pass on that. And I should have kept these all in separate layers, but oh well. I am going to go one more. Because now when I saw those warms in there, I really like that. Let's see how this works. Let's go there. Yeah. I want to get some stuff coming up through here. It's a little too much right there. Okay, so what I would do now is I would go in <clears throat> and I'd probably start, actually, let's try this. I'm gonna go in and pick this color, oops, this color. And I'm just gonna try this. I wanna deepen a few areas like in here. I don't want that, hang on. I want a regular brush or maybe just a, maybe a texture brush. I don't know. Probably don't need a texture brush for this. So I don't like the texture brush. I don't need that because I'm going to have to manipulate it to get it to another thing. So I'm probably just going to use this. Let's just see what happens. Because what I want this to do is blend in darker underneath. Give me some darker. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Oh, I went on the wrong layer. Hang on. You always want to keep these on different layers. So let's try it again. So random. Then 
I'm going to go see if I can find something. Oh, that's even kind of cool right there. So now I might take it in a different direction. I kind of like that. But I'm going to kind of obliterate it. So it's sort of giving it sort of another gassy pass over it. Does that make sense? Yes. And I can obliterate some of this too. I might come in and go, well, it's a little strong. Sort of take it down a little bit. I could go in with an eraser and just really shape it out. But I'll just leave it there for now. It's a little strong. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's see if we can go back to this. I'm going to go. I'm going to try this. Actually, I'm going to do the same thing we did earlier. Since Casey is all crazy about this. Hang on, I'm trying to get this one. Let's see. There we go. Sorry, hang on. I'm trying to get something to use for a mask. But now I have all these layers on here. Damn it. That's texture. That's um yeah, screw, I'll just do it like this. I'm reuse that. Just drop a color in there so I can see it. There it is. And then I'm gonna come down here. I really want to make this a different color so I can see it. Like a really weird color. There. So now I've got that. So now I'm going to duplicate that. And this now needs to become another color. So I can see it. There we go. And then I'm going to come down here. Maybe just down like that. I'm going to select this, cut that out, get rid of this. Now I've got my little edge light again. Yeah? <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so let's lighten it up a little. Now, I'd also probably have to come in here eventually and kind of soften that up a little. So I could go select that as my selection. And then let's put edge light here. And I can probably soften it just with my Gaussian blur because I've got it selected, so it might work. Let's try it. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. And then again, I might have softened it more, but that's okay. Let's go you we'll saturate it more. Lighten it up a little. Maybe about there. Okay, and let's do I'm not gonna do a ring. I'm gonna do something maybe flying around it. So let's do this. I'm going to move the whole thing over a little bit. Oops. Don't want any of that. All I want is the planet stuff. I think starts here. 
and all these should be. Nope, got that one too. I know where that is. That's fine. Let's do this. I'm trying to see what isn't locked onto here. And this is why we name our layers, right? Yes, exactly. We need that. I'm trying to figure out. Ooh, that's kind of cool too. Actually, I kind of like that. But I think I need the dark ones. Okay, <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out which layer is just. I don't want any nebula. There it is. Oops. So let's go there. Oops. And then, oops. I'll get these. I think that's it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to move this over. I think I'm going to shrink this down a little. And I could lock all these together with my little chain thing there. <clears throat> but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a copy of this. And I'm going to flatten it. Now, there's a million ways to avoid having to do it that way. But this is fine. Because <clears throat> I'm just trying to do this as quick as I can. OK, so now that's one thing. I think I want to try this. <clears throat> now, this is probably going to be screaming way too loud right here, but I'm going to try it. I think you should actually, yeah, let's just try it. I need some kind of a, I think this might just be my regular drawing brush idea. I think I'm gonna start doing some like little, maybe lava flows or something in here. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. Well, let's just, Throw it down like I always do. And then I'll worry about the color and all that. I'm also going to, I always like to reshape these things. So I tend to come back in and um, whatever you call it. So let's try something. I think actually this will be okay. I just want to see. I want to try one more thing. Okay, so let's do this. Let's come in. I'm going to grab some kind of, I think I'll grab this. And by the way, some of your brushes you can assign other things to. So some of your brushes you can assign a racer to, you can assign a smudge brush to, uh, different things. Now, some you can't, they're specialty. Usually it's the ones that have um, <clears throat> images like this right here. See how it has a smudge finger next to it? It means it's a smudge brush. And then you'll get some, and we're gonna talk about these on Monday, uh, uh, other types of specialty brushes. Um, those usually <clears throat> don't let them uh, be assigned to other things. Sometimes I like to get a really rough brush and assign it to a, uh, an eraser so I can erase out rough edges and things like that. Does that make sense? Which is kind of what I'm gonna do now, except I think I'm gonna try and use a smudge to do it. And the reason sometimes I like the smudge is it it tends to also pull things in, into the surrounding environment or whatever, however you want to say that. But I don't want to just leave these marks. They're not quite right. Mike, I have a quick question. Sure. I know you said you're going to go over it on Monday, but I'm just curious. Is there a way to change like what the brush is like assigned to? Like if it's like only for painting, like is there a way for you to change it to like smudge and like vice versa? Uh, I'd have to look into that. <clears throat> okay. My initial reaction is probably no. Okay. Because okay. <clears throat> I would assume, uh, like if they're, if they're Photoshop brushes, there's some, I don't know how they're doing them. There might, you know, that might be all the way down at the bottom level, the programming of that thing. Oh, but okay. I don't know. I, I'll look okay. it up. You know, that's a good question. Cause some of the smudge brushes look like they'd be really great for just like, like painting in general. Yeah. I agree. The, tr the trick here is that you got, so you can see I'm starting to break it up a little bit. Does that make sense? 
Yes. Because you're trying to make it look like it's on the surface, not just floating. Yeah, it's also just, I don't want it just a linear idea there. I want it to feel more like a natural sort of, if I'm looking at lava flows or whatever from space, they're going to be brighter, softer, they're going to disappear, they're going to, you know, does that make sense? Yes. Uh -huh. So, so kind of like the flame idea you did a couple days ago? Yeah, because yeah. I'm going to, yes, exactly, and I'm going to do a pass on it that'll make sense in that regard in a second here. What I'm trying to do is just sort of get it set up. Now I could also find spots where I kind of pool it where it's, that's the source of it, but I got to sort of figure it out first. I don't like that one. It's just too uniform or something. So the thing I'm trying to combat right here is my uniformity. I don't like that. Um, and then, okay, so let's say, let's say that's fine for now. I'm going to go, I'm still going to try my overlays. I don't think that'll be matter, but I, I still, oh, maybe it does. Oh yeah. Okay, so some of these are cool. There's a little bit of uniformity in there I don't like, but I'm just gonna let it slide. <clears throat> I like that intensity of that color, but I think I'm gonna come in here with a really simple, okay, so like this, I'm gonna go, now see, that's my, my drawing brush, but it's I left it as a smudge brush. Okay? Yeah. So that one I can reassign. The reason I want that is because I want to smooth this out a little bit because it's actually on dissipate or dissolve, which is not what I want. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to do this. I don't know if this is going to be a good idea. So it's getting little clusters here and then I'm rubbing out some of the other stuff. Let's see if I like it. What I really like here is the intensity of that red. So let's pick that. I think that's what I'm really responding to. So I'm going to go backwards here because I don't like it. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I can make that work. Let's try something here. So it is dissipating, but I'm going to put another layer on top of it and maybe come in with a, a more, a little rougher brush, but really small. Still don't and cluster a few of these where it's sort of suggesting that already. So there's some sort of source to these. Does that make sense? Yes. And then I'll come back in with a regular brush and sort of create the rivers a little bit again. Because I do want a little bit of that linear idea here because that's what it is. And again, come back in, screw around with them. Now, <clears throat> that's starting to work. Um, I'm gonna, again, I would never do this, but I'm gonna, do it here and I'm going to knock it down just a hair and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to warm it up. Get my small brush again. And then this should be on its own layer. and start putting the hotter stuff inside of there. I'm not gonna do it everywhere. There should be a hot source here coming out and dissipating as the river gets further away from the whatever the source is, a volcano, whatever it is. Does that make sense? Yes. It's gonna really dissipate up as it gets towards the poles probably because it's colder. By the way, you guys seen that volcano that went off in uh, Iceland? Uh, recently or yeah. uh, no it's funny because all the Icelandic people because they're just trippy people they um they all go and like hang out there <laughs> this is volcano going off
Okay, see how we're starting to get that nice sort of cracked surface kind of idea, okay? <clears throat> now, yeah, that's starting to work. <clears throat> I feel like it needs a bigger statement somewhere. <clears throat> so maybe it's like, see, when I'm doing this, my brain's always creating the story around it. So maybe this planet, it's weird, it's not, oh, there it is. Um, maybe it harnesses this for an energy source, who knows? And maybe there's a big, oops. Yeah, that's weird, there. Maybe I can get a bigger source of it out here. Maybe there's a sort of a lake of fire out here. I wonder if I can, no, can't see that one won't let me change it to a smudge. Yeah. I'm going to do that other thing again. I'm going to do this one because I really like this dappled thing. It really gives me some nice um, edges. Yeah, that's good. And then let's go back to this idea, back to a warmer idea. And again, I'm going to keep these separated. Okay, that's my smart No, it isn't. Oops, too much. So there's the source. This is a bigger thing, so I'm going to go maybe even warmer or brighter and warmer. So we're doing the same thing as a flame. I'm going in there and getting it hotter. Maybe there's a little out here. Yeah, it needed a bigger statement like that, right? I think it could even be bigger. So let's see if we can do this. Oops. I'm going to take both of these, make a copy, turn off the originals, flatten them, and then just see if I can go. Yeah. I think you can even go bigger. And then I could come in here probably with my, um, with my, uh, this one, edit, transform, warp, and maybe have it sort of follow that curve a little more. Does that make sense? Yeah, you want it to wrap the form of the sphere. Yeah, so I'm always trying to do that. I might even come up in some of these and do it, um, like wrap that one. This one feels like it needs to be wrapped a little more. Yeah. Um, but I'm, for the sake of time, I won't do it. Okay, so now let's go. Let's do something else. Let's go boom. Now, here's my planet, right? Yeah, there's my planet. I'm going to move this up. I think I can do that. Nope, I can't. I can do it up to here, I think. Nope. What the hell is that? there it is it's all the rivers you made it's all the what the lava river crack things i'm gonna again do something i never do and i'm gonna flatten these just for just for sake of now i also look at it and go could it go a little darker to really emphasize mm -hmm. that warmth right are you getting comfortable, Casey? Yes, I am. I'm also crying because you're not grouping your layers together. I should. Okay. <laughs> when I'm doing these things, I'm doing them on the fly. Does that make sense? But yes, work smart. And I'm not right now. Okay. <clears throat> Although I don't usually folder my stuff, even though that's a great way to work. I usually, but I do usually name them very clearly. Okay. And the naming convention is usually just for my own brain. 
if I was going to send somebody else, I'd probably go in and rename them or something more general. Like I might go texture idea, you know, somebody else isn't going to know what that means. Okay. Okay. So there's that for now. This is all in its own layer now, which is good. I wonder if I can just go just this one area. Yeah. So that'll pull it out and start to wrap it a little better. That's a little better. And then one other thing I want to try. You know, is that the right configuration? I think it is. I think I like it that way. Okay. So let's do this. We got these two things. I'm going to pull this out a little more. I'm going to go here. I'm going to get on another layer. I'm just going to have maybe something buzzing around this planet. And I'm going to do it. Depends on where my eye view is. And in this case, I've got a sphere, which always looks the same in any kind of perspective. I'm in space. So the perspective starts to become what looks right, really. Okay. I mean, yes, I could place perspective in here, but it, it's kind of, I don't have any man-made vehicles or anything in here. So it's not really all that interesting, right? <clears throat> okay. So let's go, I'm going to take, could be any color. Let's take something fairly warm. I'll, I'll probably change this. And I got this here. So I'm going to go ring. Now I am going to start naming this stuff now that Casey called me out on it. Made me feel bad about myself. I'm just saying, because you're spending like a good like 30 seconds to a minute looking, you're like, is this the layer? Is this the layer? Yeah. <laughs> I'm only doing that to show you not to do that. Until I pointed it out. Until I pointed it out. Okay. That's a good example. <laughs> okay, so there's my ring. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it maybe... uh something i don't know if it's you know a vehicle or whatever i don't know and i think what i'm going to do let's go here so i'm going to re-grab this shape oops now it's i moved it so we have to go back here let's go here it's going to be a little off but that's okay I'm going to get my eraser. Just erase the inside of it. It's actually not going to touch over there anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Like, I think I'm going to end it like about there. And then I'm going to get a rough brush, another rough. Let's see if I can get a rough erase. Actually, I think I can do this with a smudge. I want to use this one because this will bust up the edge, which I like. And I'm going to recarve this. Oops. And I might have to do it with an eraser. Because back here, it's going to start, it's going to really thin out and dissipate if it was an energy trail. Does that make sense? Yeah? An energy trail? Yeah, like if this was something creating an energy trail. Does that make sense? Like a vehicle or whatever. Yes? Yes. Oh, I, I don't know. I was thinking of like, this was like a band of rocks that yeah. were like, like the Saturn ring. Nah. Okay. All right. I want to do something that maybe is man-made or whatever made. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Is that to give it a sense of scale too? Yeah, and it's, it just popped in my head. I, you know, sometimes I've done the ring, sometimes I do this. And then I'm going to build it up out here. And again, I think I'm going to want a nice rough brush for this. Yeah. So maybe it'll start to get, this is the leading edge of it. I don't know what it is. Could be a vehicle. I don't know what it is. And then I'm going to come back here, I think with an eraser and see if I can assign a, I don't think I can't now. Can't with that. Let's go. Let's go into our regular brushes and see if any of those look good. I don't see any good ones. So I'll have to rough it up after the fact. 
That's not even letting me do that one. Hang on. Come on. I need an eraser. Yeah, yeah, it is. I just want to taper this back here. So I'm going to have to rough it up again. You guys get why I'm tapering it, right? No. Because it's further away? Well, it's, if it started here and it comes around here and the point of fire or whatever is here, that's going to dissipate in. in oh, right it's, it's the tail. Yeah. Okay. And I can also get, you know, not have as much of it. Also, I want to check and see if I like that color. Yeah, I think it's fine. And I'm also going to just break it up a little bit. I, think, oh, I got to recalibrate. Can you do something about this, Casey? Can you talk to Wonkum, please? Yeah, give me your rep's phone number. I'll, I'll call them. Got a new rep now. Yeah. That, our last rep was really a cool guy. Kind of sad to see him go. Anybody gives me six grand in equipment for free is okay with me. Right on. Right on. That's... I don't think they like the company doing that, by the way, which is really weird to me. <clears throat> you know, if it's out of their heart, you know, that's, that's all right. You know. But yeah, he was a cool guy. I liked him. That's why I don't like shit talking walk but I still don't think the product's great. Okay, so I'm just going to vary this out. And then I'm going to come in and heat it up again. Maybe, maybe I'll just, I'm going to um, lock the pixels here again and just play here for a second. See if I can find something cool. I want to get a ratty brush again. Oops, I don't want that one. I've been liking this one I've been using in here. I think it's this one. And let's see if I can just heat that up. Or maybe just get some more warmth in it. It's got to go hotter. This is probably going to be too much. So when you say hotter, you mean like the the core of the thing that you're painting yeah, whatever's generating this but it really needs to go i'm putting a lot of red in it which would actually be where it goes a little cooler or not cooler but starts to dissipate but yeah. i'm going to try and go a little bit different angle with this and see if i can get it to work um so i'll go with this hot in here now i'm going to go really hot here now I can dance a little of that in here. And again, I've got my lock transparent pixels on. And then maybe even, I could probably even light up this little edge right there if this was hitting the planet, if it was that monumental, right? I'm gonna unlock this layer now because I might come in here now and let some of this really get almost white hot. Come on. And then I'm going to go Let's see what this does. Move too much. Go back to my other brush. That's too, um, whatever you call it, too compressed. You know, everything's too close together. Where the hell's my brush? Who's this one I thought? like that right there and then maybe I come in here and again something I would never do you know and I'd probably play around with this a little more and maybe come up here
Maybe do one of those numbers in there. Does that make sense? That's what we're doing. Okay. Now, how you want to handle it, you don't have to do exactly like I did at all. Okay. We're looking for these textural ideas and now using our brushes, smudging, overlay, you know, everything we've been using. Okay. So kind of everything now is coming together. For, uh, and I, you don't have to do exactly like I did it at all. Okay. If you want to put the Saturn rings on it, cool. Do it. Um, I still want to dick around with that color a little bit. I don't like it yet. Um, probably desaturate a couple things, maybe even the background a little bit. Uh, and then in this case, the lens fair works pretty nice. You know what I mean? And I also, also, let's go back. I might take this now. Without the volcanic stuff. Oops. And by the way, there's no atmosphere in space. So there's no atmospheric perspective in space, right? You ever see pictures in space of how weird they look? Oh, yeah. But the, the gas from like nebula could i guess kind of, that would right? i'm assuming but i mean like yeah. you see when they're out in space like the space shuttle or whatever it is or not the shuttle the uh, iss if you ever notice those pictures look weirdly clear yeah it's crisp yeah they're just like super clear and like every there's no it's got to be so bizarre to be up there because there's no up there's no down you know what i mean there's no real kind of i mean there's perspective in a sense but there is no up or down or any of that kind of stuff. You could be floating upside down in relation to what? I don't know. The light's totally weird. There's no atmosphere. It, it's totally bizarre that you're even, I just can't even imagine it. And then when you look out the window, the earth's going down below you, 17,500 miles an hour is what they're buzzing around the earth at, right? Which is mind blowing. And I read, a, um, our, there's a really interesting book. This guy stayed on the mirror station which was the Russian station they left in space too long. Um, they, you know, it had a lifespan, but they kept it going. And it's weird. The Russians are just like this when they do stuff. So anyway, this, the Americans would go up there once in a while. And uh, this guy went there and he goes that, he goes, the mirror station was like camping in a broken down car in a field. Okay. He goes, there's stuff, stuff behind all the equipment. There's paper everywhere. It was totally disorganized. It was dangerous. But he's, he talked about doing a spacewalk because I've, I've just always wondered about that. And he goes, and I think it was his first one. And he goes, man, when you walk out there, he goes, you get this overwhelming sense of falling, you know, and plus the earth below you, you know, just gigantic. And it's just spinning underneath you like that. And he goes, it's so like insane. You know what I mean? Because you got to remember, no humans were designed for that experience. You know what I mean? We weren't designed, you know, that's total, that's still completely mind blowing you know, to me anyway. I might take this other one somewhere and maybe shift the color. Hang on, let me do it. Actually, I might do this. Let's do this. Let's just take this color. We can get sort of a, maybe a Marsy kind of thing going. You know, and I could dial in some other color. Now, if you notice, I sort of made the whole thing one monochromatic color. I did that on purpose because I want to get it away from feeling like the same planet. Does that make sense? still kind of lit sort of the same. I could also come in here and just go, I'm going to break up these shapes a little more. Maybe it, make it feel like a different topography. Might add some of that dark around. Just sort of break it up. Maybe I'd go, I don't know if this will work. Oh, and Mike, I just remembered. Could you also post the, the Walt Disney like sketch oh, yes. or portfolio thing? Mm -hmm. I have two things. I got to put up the Greg Rakowski brushes, actually three things, the pencil brush and the Disney thing. I'll do that today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, and I could get another planet back here and I could maybe, you know, I might have to go in and really lighten it up. So even if there is no perspective in here, I'm going to add it. No atmosphere perspective or whatever. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. See, I don't want to see those stars behind it, so I'd have to 
uh, I probably would have just lighted it up instead of trying to make it transparent. Okay. And then go back to my lens flare and then I'm out. Does that make sense? Um, questions? I think it's pretty straightforward now, right? And then we're going to go through, okay, so we're going through this. I'm going to go through another set of brush ideas on Monday. Tuesday. Tuesday. And then um, um, I think Actually, if, if I could ask, color. huh? If I could ask, the way you, um, when you started off, you did the, the shape. Uh -huh. You did that with the elliptical tool? Yeah, I just went here. Yes. That's your marquee tool, right? And then I hold, if you hold option and shift, it'll it'll make it from the center out. Oh, okay. All right. Also, this is important. So if I do this, see, it's just going to be wobbly. If I go shift, it's going to hold it, constrain it. Okay. Also, if I need to move that selection, I can hold down the space bar and I can move it around, which is really important. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you cannot line this thing up exactly you got to be able to move it right and that's yeah. just in your space bar okay so now i let go of the space bar now i'm just adjusting the size of it hit space bar and i can move it so if i needed to reduplicate this size it would make it's a lot easier on me if i can move that around and get it lined up correctly and how did you get it so that only the inside was you know markable well right now uh, uh, by default photoshop if i have a selection Photoshop will only work inside the selection. Okay. Do that. All right. So it, asks, it acts as a mask or whatever you want to call it, right? Now, if I go Command, Shift, I, it inverts the selection. So now it would only work oh. around uh, the selection. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's Command, uh, Shift, I. I think it's under Select. No. Okay. Filter or a Select, Inverse. Yeah, it's this one. So that means also we could do that with the eraser. We could erase things. Yeah. Make a shape and a oh. Absolutely. And then you could also, uh, you know, you can go in. I mean, there's so many, you know, if I went down here, I'm trying to find a decent eraser in here. Hang on. Thanks, Mike. Let me see if I can. None of these want to be assigned an eraser. Oh, that one does. See, that one let me do an eraser. So if I don't know if this planet was destroyed or something, oops, that's way too big. So it ate it up like that, which is kind of nice. Another thing I like to do. Hmm. So if I want to do a Death star -y thing, I just fill in the back of it now. So it's going around, right? I'd like these edges, so on and so forth, right? But another thing I like to do is, which I've seen in Earth photography also, and moons. You see it with a moon, actually is to come in here. This is too transparent, which bugs me. But um, is to come in here, make a layer mask, which wasn't working earlier for some reason. Well, let's go here. Okay, why is my layer mask not working? Hang on. Oh, it's on lighten. See how it changed that? I bet you that's it. Yep. Mike, it's Issei. Just to play devil's advocate, can you put the background in first just to put a splash of color? Uh, absolutely. And then start working? Okay. And actually, I think that's part of, probably smarter. Um, but you, you ever, ever seen like the moon rise in, in the bottom fades off? Like I love using that. I might put this now sort of back here in this little nebula idea and bury it a little bit. Mm-hmm because it's a little bit, um, I'm actually trying to fix a mistake and this is just a way of doing it. So I'm gonna bury it under all this nebulous stuff. And then I might come in here and go, well, that's just obscuring a little too much. So I'll take my eraser, put it on a low opacity. I want a soft eraser. So some of these sample brushes and stuff you can assign an eraser to, that's actually really cool. Go here and really low opacity. Sort of knock these down. They feel too strong to be in front of that and probably knock some of them out completely. So you're creating kind of like a foreground, midground. Yeah, I'm sort of burying it because I, I had that transparency in it. So if I put this there, the transparency behind it sort of feels like it's part of that sort of nebulous stuff around it. Right. 
and it kind of works a little better. And then, you know, I always go through it as always and go, is there a better color choice? I'm on the wrong layer. It's way down here now. Come on. Let's go here. You know, and at this point now, I just have to start really adjusting everything. I kind of like it more like that, like that. Okay. And then, you know, you can put whatever you want in. I'd, I'd play around with this a lot, this energy thing. I'd probably go in and really tweak. I'd tweak some of these saturation levels in this thing. I definitely tweak this background saturation. I feel like it needs to be desaturated a little bit. You know, and then I come in and just tweak, tweak, tweak. Yeah. Casey. Yes. Yes. I'm just looking. Do. I'm Go just ahead. looking at all your layers that are not named. And wow, that really bugs Casey. Um, if I'm working on my own, my business. I mean, I guess, but you're also teaching us, so shouldn't you set a good example? No, I'm telling you. Class? I'm telling you, don't do that. Right. Group yeah. them however you want to group them. Okay. Yeah. I don't, again, for some reason, folders for me just, I find annoying. Uh, I, and that doesn't mean they're bad. I think they're actually really good. Just the, I just don't like those. Okay. Now what was, what I should do here is go background. The background is just one color. So that doesn't matter, but all the nebulous stuff should be in a folder. Uh, okay. And then my planet should be in its own folder. And then you know, every group of stuff should be, it should be in its own folder. Okay. Or at least for me, what I, like I said, what I usually do is I name them and, and working in groups is much smarter. Just work in groups. Actually for this project, work in groups. Okay. Create folders and then put everything in the folder, right? Cause it is a better way to work and it is a better way to start. Um, uh, when I'm doing demos, I'm just working off the fly, but I should do that. But, um, I know I'm just joking. Sorry. Uh, Yes, I agree with you. Okay. Um, so what I would do you guys, cause we haven't really talked about groups. All you got to do is go down here and make a folder. It's right there. You can make a group folder and start putting things in that group folder. Okay. I mean, it's very simple. All right. But what I would do, like if we were working on a, like, uh, you know, if I got a building and a background and a people, the people are going to be in a folder. The background foliage is going to be in a folder. Foreground foliage might be in its own folder. Building is going to be in its own folder. People are going to be in their own folder. Foreground elements are going to be in their own folder, right? Depending on how I, I need to work. And that's probably in my brain how I would need to work because I'm always thinking, you know, you're always grouping it by foreground, background, middle ground, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so that's just how I work. Now, however you group that is your business, you know, but it is much more helpful to be able to go into. Uh, and by the way, you can set up, I have this set up to auto select layer. So usually I can just go click and now I have my planet. Right. Or I can go click and I got my volcano. OK, but you can also set this to group. And if I am in groups, I can click it and it'll take me to the group. OK, and then I can go into the folder and edit it. The reason I tend to do it like this now, it becomes a little bit unmanageable when I get a lot of like over like that's I put an overlay. So if this was still all in layers, this core kind of idea down here was a um, overlay. So every time I try and select this back here, I'm selecting overlays and then it becomes hard to deal with. OK, um, but I tend to just come in here and go click and, and select things like I just click my planet. But if I click here, I'm going to select the nebulous stuff. OK, um, I would experiment working with groups for this project. OK, um, I'm probably going to put so you have quite a bit of time to work on this. I would really screw around with it and play. Um, remember, when you're kind of creating your whatever your planet topography is, uh, you know, you can always either, you can always go back to the, oh, one other thing I would do. Yeah, it's, it's locked. One other thing, let's put it here. One other thing I would do before I would have flat, and I would never flatten this, is I would have softened the edge of this planet. Okay. Now what you got to remember is if I go in to soften that. Okay. So let's say we got that texture. So what people do is they go, I'm going to soften up this edge. They come up here and they go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And, you know, no matter what you do, you're going to be blurring your whole image. Okay. 
So I could go just with my sponge tool, and, or I think it's no, my blur tool, I'm sorry, which is right here. Could do that. I should be able to go select it and go filter, or no, um, select, modify, feather. And let's just give it five. I'm gonna go invert it. And it, it softened the edge by five pixels. Okay, it's still got a little bit of a hard edge here. So I still might have to come in and soften that a little more. Okay, but the point being, so I might come in here. I mean, you could do it either or. I might come in here and soften that up with my sponge tool. Because I don't like the way it's getting a little bit. So I might just done it with my sponge tool to begin with. Just depends on how you want to do it. So it's still got a little bit of a hard outer edge, which I don't like. But I like the interior edge. Okay. And then I could soften that up. Does that make sense? So you got to uh, make sure you're not just blurring the whole thing out because then you ruin all your work. Okay. Um, again, I don't really care what kind of scene you do. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. It can be whatever you want. I just want it to be some sort of this idea, this kind of spacey, whatever, right? I could have put a vehicle at the front of that little energy trail. Okay, guys. Okay. I'll let you go. If you Thanks, need to talk to me, talk to me. Okay? Thank you. Thank All right, you. you guys. Thank you. See you, Thank you. Uh, Tuesday. Don't forget the pencil brush. I won't.